Hey guys, welcome back to Fieldcraft Survival. So today we're going to look at my truck, the loadout that I have, and then the stuff that I keep in my truck at all times, and then the stuff that I load out when I'm, you know, if I was going to, to bug out to upgrade my situation. If you talked about bugging out a year ago, people thought you were a crazy conspiracy theorist and you, you were, you know, wearing a tinfoil hat. But nowadays, if you don't have a contingency plan to upgrade your situation, when things go bad, you, you probably should, especially if you live in a city. Cities are going to run out of food real quickly if something happens. And it might not be, you know, it might not, it might not be a, a man-made disaster. It could be a, a natural disaster. But go on, get down. Natural disasters are often lead to man-made disasters, right? As resources get low, people, um, they, get, they get primitive real quick, okay? So a couple of things I didn't do for this video. I did not go out and spend thousands of dollars buying the latest, coolest gear I could find. I'm too lazy. Um, I did also, I did not borrow stuff from 10 other people. Um, I just used the stuff that I had personally. And I, I did not wash my truck. You can see that, right? I just pulled it into the warehouse, threw some stuff in there, and uh, we're going to walk through it. We're going to do individual videos for each individual bag later. This first one's kind of a general overview. All right, so let's take a look. So if you look in the back right here, um, I do have a Dometic fridge. I, I really don't like these videos where people have the latest and greatest everything, like I said. That, that's a really cool piece of kit, but I didn't buy it. I traded it for a scope. Um, big shout out to Mike Hernandez. I uh, hope you're enjoying that scope you had. I inside here, I also have our loadout bag. This is an 80 liter loadout bag that I have the uh, food and water in and uh, a little bit of survival equipment. And then this is a 40 liter bag that I have extra medical equipment in, all right? Back here, I have a bronc box, which we're gonna pull out and take a look at. That's kind of my security stuff. That's the stuff I need to uh, keep the bad people away. Uh, and then back there in the back corner, I have a rucksack with camping equipment, cold weather gear. Um, I have uh, a small baby sack, like a small one man tent in there. I have all the stuff um, I would need if I were to move from this truck into the woods and uh, leave this behind. Everybody talks about bugging out and they talk about bug out bags. Me, I'm taking my truck. I, I can carry a lot of gear here. If I have to leave my truck eventually, I'll download what I can. I'll probably cache a truck and then move back to it periodically, but I, I'm taking my truck. It's an extension of my rucksack. In here, I, like I, I did not pay thousands of dollars for a drawer system. I don't have thousands of dollars, so I went ghetto. This is Walmart, like 20 bucks. I put some plywood in here, some two by fours across, threw some plywood in here, and then got these little roller bins in Walmart, and I have a bunch of stuff packed in here. I got medical equipment, I got you know camping stuff. I've got a small backpack for like patrol pack. I got some more cold weather gear, but you can pull this out. If, if, if at any time I need more space, I can throw this stuff away. It costs nothing. I, I don't know how much these are, 30 bucks maybe? Let me throw that one out. This one, same thing like vehicle stuff, repair, jumper cables, Fieldcraft Survival uh, trail mix. Get it, get it while it's hot. Pull that one out. And I have my like super sophisticated little rope attached here where I can pull this one out. And I have more gear in here. <laughs> I have a ghillie suit. I don't know why I have a ghillie suit. I just do. Um, cold weather gear. And then I have this one here too. That's got a bunch of extra camping gear, stove, uh, camping gas. So I can leave. I can leave all the drawer system in at all times. I can leave my kind of bug out bag with all my camping gear because there's nothing perishable. I can't leave um, food and water in here. If you leave water in a vehicle in Utah, it freezes pretty bad. So I, I pull all that stuff out and I'm obviously not gonna leave any weapons or expensive equipment in here because Mike gets stolen. All right, so survival, med, the fridge if I need it, my, my rucksack with my camping gear and my security box. So, like I said, we'll go through these individually, but let's take a look at the security box right now. Let's talk about a, a couple of different segments of your loadout, and this one's near and dear to my heart, security. 
So not to be a crazy veteran, you know, paranoid guy, but if you are upgrading your situation and you're moving from your home to something uh, less dangerous, then you have resources, hopefully, and resources are probably starting to be a precious commodity. So unless you're willing to defend what you have, somebody's just going to take it from you. That's just the world we live in. Uh, it's happened time and time again. So this box I do not keep in my truck because it would be irresponsible because there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, I keep it in my house, but it has wheels, and I have a loading ramp at my house where I can just wheel it out and put it in the back of my truck if I had to move quickly. This is what I would take. Just a caution, you do tend to overload this, and it becomes really heavy. So unless you have something like a loading ramp that you can put it in there yourself, you're, you're going to run into problems. So it, it's pretty tough box. It, it's going to keep your stuff secure. It's got a seal, so it's water resistant. So if it was in the back of a pickup truck and it rained, it would keep it um, dry and, and uh, stop it getting damaged. It has two locking uh, positions here. You can put padlocks on it, and then it has these military-style fasteners that keep it really, really sealed. Pretty cool piece of kit. All right, let's take a look inside. So if you look, I, I got a lot of stuff in here, but um, I got night vision goggles, I got body armor, some mags, I got batteries, and again, you don't want to keep batteries in your truck because the cold weather will zap them. I got some communication equipment. Um, I got mags here for 308, mags for 556, and mags for uh, 762 by 39. Uh, I got my suppressor. Got some spare ammo. Got a range finder and a, a Kestrel. And then I got a little truck gun, this little Maxim truck gun, which is the 762 by 39. Here I've got a couple of Glocks and a bunch of uh, loaded mags and then a couple of extra mags. I'm going to go into more detail in the contents of this on our locals page. So up here I got a cam light fastened. If I open this thing at night, I know where to grab it, just crack it so I have some light. Got a couple of med kits, a tourniquet, and I got a knife because you can never have enough knives. So the really cool part is I can turn this here and here, and drop this down, and inside here I've got the cool stuff, right? I got a carbine here, 556 with a suppressor, locked and loaded, zeroed, ready to go. I've got a survival kit, med kit, I got a tourniquet in, in a Fieldcraft tourniquet holder, and then I've got a long range capability. This is a 308 gas gun made by LaRue, and it's a switch barrel system. With this wrench, I can change out the barrel on this gun, which is set up for 308, and I can make it a 260 Remington, which gives me the ability to shoot uh, two different types of ammo um, if I have to resource ammo later on. I threw this in here. This is my uh, little wheel gun. It's, it's unloaded right now. It's got an eight-shot cylinder, and it's a little more kick if I was going up against a bear or something like that in a, in a campsite. Then, then this will do a whole lot more damage to a bear than, than a nine millimeter Glock will. All right, I can throw that up here. This, fasten it. Got all my stuff, got it all laid out. And then as I move from my vehicle, I, I would load out of this. It just gives me the, the ability to put everything in one location, wheel it up, throw it in the back of my truck and move really, really quickly in an emergency. So we're going to take a look at the front of my vehicle right now. I don't have a ton of stuff in here. Um, most of it sits in the back. The whole back seat's pretty much taken my Vinny. Right, buddy? I've got a medical kit. I've got more trauma gear here attached to the back of this. Uh, the problem with this kit is that when you get to a, 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 you know, a vehicle accident or something like that, and you need to pull the stuff out, i got to open up the pouch and pull the contents, and I don't like that. And that's why the uh, Fieldcraft Mobility Bag was developed. So we'll take a look at that in a second. I've got some gloves and some other knickknacks here. I've got my pistol here. This is kind of what I do every day. I get in, I'll, I'll pull it out of my waistband, and I'll stick it into this little uh, Armageddon gear holster right here. Um, I got a, a visor panel with a tourniquet and a med kit and a knife up there. But that, that's generally it. So uh, let's go to the other side and take a look at the uh, Fieldcraft Mobility Bag. So this is the Fieldcraft Mobility Bag, and it was built for a specific purpose. And it, it zips into a bag that you can take off and move from the vehicle. But internally, 
all these pouches can be grabbed, ripped off, and moved depending on what you want. So I've got survival. I got med. I got more med here. I got some tourniquets and flashlights and then a little bit of chow down here. So um, you can roll this up and it stages like that or you can zip it up like this and keep it covered. But it's, uh, it's a pretty neat little pack. Like I said, it can be taken off and worn as a backpack if you're moving from the vehicle or if you think you might need everything. But seconds count, man. So I just realized that a few minutes ago I said I'm not some crazy veteran nut job, but come look at my box with enough equipment to take over a small country. So maybe I am that guy. I try not to be, but um, purely defensive in nature. So we are going to go into more detail on the Bronx box, the security, the survival kits that we, we carry, and the, uh, the food, and water, and clothing, and stuff like that on our locals channel. So uh, if you're not a member, uh, Philcraft Survival, dot locals dot com you can come in you can get free content and you can get paid content and uh we, we've really put a lot of stuff on there and we're going to keep going okay until then stay alert stay alive